What's going on guys, Car Guy V8 here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can drop a full one and a half seconds off of your zero to 60 in your EFI 302 F-150. So first, let's take a look at what truck we're dealing with. This was my old 1996 F-150 XL with a 302. One good thing about it being an XL is that it was pretty bare bones and did not have many options. When I first bought the truck, I actually had it weighed using a truck scale, and it weighed 4,160 pounds with me, a half tank of gas, and a bunch of tools in it. So it was definitely lighter than most would think for a full-sized short wheelbase truck. The truck came factory with 355 rear gears, and it also had a 4R70W, which that is a bonus in my opinion, because the 4R70W has a steeper first gear, a 2.84 first gear, as opposed to the AOD or AODE's 2.4 first gear. So right off the bat, that's a significant head start in the gearing department. Now I'm going to show you the first 0-60 to test that I recorded five years ago when I bought this truck. Now it's important to note that it was bone stock other than a cheap cold air intake, hooker long tube headers with true dual exhaust. So other than just exhaust and a cheap cold air intake, engine, trans, rear end, weight, everything was bone stock how it would have come from the factory. It also had relatively high mileage at right at 180,000. So that was my starting point with this truck. Using my editing software, I was able to determine the exact start and end of the run, and it came out to 8.6 seconds according to my calculations. And this was using 30.6 inch tall tires all around the truck. They were Cooper Discover AT3, 265, 75, 15s. And even though the truck had a 355 rear gear, it acted like it had significantly taller gearing due to how tall these tires were. So the first thing I did to try and increase the performance of the truck is I changed the spark plugs and spark plug wires just because they were getting old. But I did the legendary 13 degree timing bump. You know, you just unplug the spout connector, check your timing, advance it if it has not been already. And after that, I can say firsthand that I did notice a difference, at least in the seat of the pants feel. Felt torquier and the throttle response was better after bumping that timing up. Then I had a shop install some Ford Racing 410 gears, and that made a difference too in the acceleration. So it is worth mentioning that whenever you uh, change the gear ratio in one of these OBS Aero Nose Ford trucks, the uh, speedometer readout is in the differential, so you actually don't have to do anything to the computer. It automatically adjusts to whatever gear is in it because it's reading it at the rear end and not at the transmission. Here is a video of the truck after I did the timing bump and the 410 gears. According to my editing software, the truck made an 8.2 second 0 to 60 run, and I actually did a second one, but it was identical to that, so I just included footage of the first run, and that is an improvement of 0.4 seconds. So at this time, I decided to get the truck dynoed and it made 191 rear wheel horsepower and 240 rear wheel foot pounds of torque. So at 20% drivetrain loss, that's about 240 horse, 300 foot pounds at the crank. So I was quite happy with this considering the truck was stock rated at about 199 horsepower and 270 foot pounds. Now, depending on the year of the truck, the horsepower varies a little bit, but not a whole lot. So 40 horsepower was quite an improvement. So at this point, the truck was pretty peppy and fun to drive, but I was not finished with it yet. Next, I decided to buy some eBay electric fans, and these were under $100 and still are to this day, actually. And that increased the torque feel a little bit and made it feel a little better, you know, a little more throttle response. So it was a small difference, but it was noticeable when you start to add all these changes I've done one on top of the other. And then it was time to actually put some beefy muscle truck tires on it. I put some thick 295 5015s in the rear. This made a drastic difference. When doing the math, going from 30.6 tires to these 26.6 inch tall tires is nearly identical to changing the gear ratio earlier in this video. 
So I decided to do one last thing that was actually free. I did some major weight reduction to the truck, removed the spare, the jack, some little parts here and there that weren't real important to the function of the truck. I removed the rear bumper, which made it sit a little higher, but early on when having this truck, it got some lowering hangers on it. So it, uh, it set about stock, maybe slightly lower than that at this point, even with all the weight removed from the rear. Also removed some of my fluids and tools that I kept behind the rear seat, totaling about 200 pounds of junk removed from this truck. So now it's set at 3,800 pounds without me in it, and that was the biggest difference. Even over all this other stuff, that 200 pounds lost was major. So let's take a look at this final zero to 60. from 8.6 seconds down to 7.2. What a drastic change, especially considering these modifications were cheap and some of them were free. Even the rear end rebuild was under $1,000 by a professional shop, just with me providing the parts. The tires, I mean, that's just a general maintenance item that you got a budget for anyway, and those drastically improved the acceleration times as well. But all of this on an internally stock 302 with over 180,000 miles. These are good engines, guys, and it's easy to get some better performance out of them. Now, the one tragic thing about this story that I'm sure many of you have already noticed is that the transmission could not quite keep up with the truck as it started to get faster. The first to second gear shift, it would always bang the rev limiter, and you'd have to, you know, feather the throttle to keep it from doing it to get good acceleration times. Otherwise, you would lose a good half second. And at the time, I just did not have the money to get a transmission rebuild. I actually had a 2800 stall converter on the shelf as I was budgeting for a transmission rebuild. But I just couldn't afford it before I sold the truck. So that never happened. But I'm sure with a good torque converter and a rebuilt transmission with a shift kit, this truck would have easily been in the upper six second zero to 60 range. I don't have any doubt about that. This just shows you what you can do with a stock setup, just improving things like the gear ratio, the weight of it, you know, the little things like the exhaust, timing, air intake, stuff like that. Very simple, not that expensive, and you can drastically improve your zero to 60 times. Now, I was watching Uncle Tony's video the other night just talking about taking stock parts or stock engines, stock vehicles, seeing what you can do without any major changes. And that reminded me of this old truck I used to have. I realize many of you have watched many videos with this truck over the years of my channel and, you know, seen it as the years progress, but I've never made a video from start to finish of what this truck was versus what it was whenever I sold it three years after purchasing it, and the change is drastic. So guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe.